Bruce Lee's death hits Hong Kong like a tornado. Stunned residents react in shock and disbelief. The local press is full of speculation and rumor. How could one so fit and healthy die so young? Thousands turn out for Lee's funeral, and the authorities have to lay on hundreds of extra police officers around the Kowloon funeral parlor to keep the crowds at bay. Above an ornate portrait of Bruce hangs a banner which reads, A star sinks in a sea of art. All around are draped thousands of tributes as close friends and colleagues come to pay their last respects. Members of the funeral party file past the coffin. Many are overcome with grief. Linda and the children gather round for a final look before leaving for the airport. Bruce's body will travel with them to Seattle on this, his final journey. In Hong Kong, public controversy continues to rage over the circumstances of Lee's death. On Friday, July 20th, 1973, the day of his passing, Bruce had arranged a restaurant appointment with George Lazenby, partner Raymond Chow, and Taiwanese actress Betty Ting Pei at Hong Kong's Hyatt Hotel to further discuss script ideas for the game of death. He never arrived. The day he died, we had lunch together, and we were discussing the film more and more deeply, and we're having lunch, and we always had a little corner of a restaurant with a screen because people would bug you. If Bruce was there, they'd just sit literally swarm and stand there and watch him while he ate. And so we had a screen and we're sitting in the back of this restaurant. He said, I got a headache. I said, and I thought, Jesus, you know, I often get a headache, but it's usually from drinking. And he said, I don't have a headache very often. But um, I said, well, look, Skip tonight, we're going to have dinner that night. And I said, Skip tonight. And when I get back and my wife's going to have a baby and when I, that's done, my wife was eight and a half months pregnant. I said, I'll be right back and we'll get on with this movie. I said, but don't worry about tonight if you don't feel well. He said, if I said I'm going to be there, I'll be there. And I was waiting with Raymond Chow that evening for Bruce. And it was, he was about half an hour late, and it's not like him to be late. So I called. I said to Raymond, I said, where's Bruce? Do you know where he is? He said, oh, yeah, he's, uh, I know where he is. This is the number. Calling en route to collect Ting Pei from her apartment, Bruce had complained of a severe headache. Ting Pei had offered him a painkilling tablet called Equagesic. After taking the pill, Bruce had lain down on the bed to rest, but quickly lost consciousness. He never recovered. Bruce Lee is pronounced dead on arrival at Hong Kong's Queen Elizabeth Hospital. He was only 32 years old. In the absence of a statement from the Lee family, the local press continued to fuel speculation, and then at Kai Tak Airport, just before boarding the plane which will carry Bruce and the family back to the United States, Linda Lee finally breaks her silence. It is my wish that the newspapers and the people of Hong Kong will stop speculating on the circumstances surrounding my husband's death. Although we do not have the final autopsy report, I hold no suspicion of anything other than natural death. I myself do not hold any person or people responsible for his death. Fate has ways we cannot change. The only thing of importance is that Bruce is gone and will not return. He lives on in our memories and through his films. Please remember him for his genius, his art, and the magic he brought to every one of us. For we who knew him very well, his words and thoughts will remain with us forever and influence the rest of our lives. The coroner agrees. His verdict, death by misadventure. Bruce was deemed to have been hypersensitive to an ingredient in equagesic called meprobabate. This hypersensitivity caused a brain swelling known in medical parlance as cerebral oedema, which in turn led to his death. Through injuries and what have you, I got to know the doctor who did the autopsy, and they said it was just like a blood vessel burst inside his head and started leaking, like, a, like an inner tube and a tire got too thin and just started leaking, and that was causing a headache. I think it was just overtrained. 
a lot of people say you got hit there or whatever, but or secret this or secret that. But I just think he was he was too dedicated to his training. It was sad. Mm -hmm.